Video game movies are known for being uh, not very good, um, but recently it seems like video game movies are being more positively received, yeah, um, by audiences, that is, uh, critics, critics still hate these things. What I just said has nothing to do with the video because I will never, ever, ever talk about audiences and critics because that's been overdone. Um, so instead I'll be talking about controversies in heavy quotation marks surrounding these movies. I thought I'd do this thing where I talk about video games one video and movies the next, and since I made a video on Balloons TD6 starring the Dart Monkey, it's time to make a video on movies, even though, I mean, it's about video game movies, but it, it still counts. I was gonna make a video on Wish, because I heard it was really bad, and I thought it'd be funny to make fun of it, um, but... I don't, I don't, I'm not going to pay to see it in theaters, and it's not out on Disney+, Plus, so I don't know. I'll do that next time, sometime later, yeah. Okay, though, and um, enough of my intro yapping, let's start with the video. The first movie I want to talk about is the Sonic movie. Boy, I love that movie. Um, it's so good. I do love it. Anyways, um, you probably know what I'm talking about, because everyone's seen this movie, it's just so good. Um, it's the, it's the ugly, ugly Sonic, man. He's, he's pretty ugly, you know, like, he's oof boy. Whoever approved this design must have been trying to sabotage this production, because you don't look at this and think, yup, this'll be a hit with the kids. He's got human teeth. That's disgusting. So anyways, the internet got mad, as the internet does, um, and they bullied Paramount into changing the design. Um, so it's a happy ending, um, except no, not really, because this, the company that made the Sonic animation thing, I'm pretty sure they went bankrupt, so not so happy ending. Now, thankfully, um, Ugly Sonic came back in one of my favorite films of all time, right below all the Despicable Me movies except the third one, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Oh boy, I love this movie, right? And in the movie, he's called Ugly Sonic. It's a really clever play on words because he's really ugly. Um, anyways, his name is also really ironic because cause he's far from the ugliest thing in the movie. Next, I'd like to talk about the Mario movie. You know the one. It made a billion dollars. I wish I had a billion dollars. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the audience and critic reception, because as I said, I would never stoop to that level. Because, like, repurposing something people were talking about like five months ago, <laughs> I would never do that. Instead, I'll talk about a new topic. Chris Pratt as Mario. Unlike the day I was born, Chris Pratt being announced as Mario is a day I will never forget. I was at my desk with my iPad on my desk, and I was watching Nintendo Direct, and I called my friend, having no idea what 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 would what, what would be announced, you know. And then and then they announced the best thing since uh since uh since Paramount announced the Sonic redesign. You do not know how shocked, how baffled I was when Chris Pratt was there and underneath him was the word Mario. It was, it was wild. Now, you see, there was some controversy surrounding this. You know, this is a video about controversies after all. Um, and, it, you know, this is because Mario is Italian and Chris Pratt is the most American man ever. Um, but the drama, if you can even call it that, I will, um, die down once the trailers and movie came out and people realized that Chris Pratt didn't do a bad job as Mario. Wow. Also, I know I'm the only one that cares about this, but did you know that Chris Pratt is in every Disney and Universal Resort in the US? It's true. He's in the Jurassic World ride in Universal Hollywood, Velocicoaster Coaster in Universal Orlando, Cosmic Rewind in Disney World, and Mission Breakout in Disneyland. That's right, my videos have educational value now. Speaking of educational value, Five Nights at Freddy's. I had more, but I really want to get this over with because the AC in my house broke and I'm wearing a hoodie and I'm really hot. Um, and saying this is actually taking longer than what I was going to say. So, whoops. I'll talk about a controversy surrounding this movie later, not the critic and audience one. But right now, I want to talk about some concepts from the movie that came before the one that was used, which was the first game, but movie. Um, I know this isn't what it was in the title of the video. 
but I don't know when else I'll talk about this, so have fun listening to me. This movie was in development for 8 years, finally coming out last year, 2023, as did Geometry Dash 2.2. I bring that up because Silksong hasn't even had a release date trailer yet. In the 8 years this movie was in development, it had many different plots, um, with my favorite being, Plushies Take Manhattan. Yeah. Now, there was also the F screenplay, which is about teenagers breaking into Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, and, um, it has a very predictable ending, you know, um, the teens find an underground bunker where Freddy Fazbear robots are being built for the government. It's really predictable, you know, like, yeah, of course Freddy Fazbear has war capabilities. Some other screenplays are an adaptation of the books nobody reads, except 10 year olds in a scholastic book fair, and the Ghostbusters going to bust ghosts at Freddy Fazbear's <laughs> and Ghostbusters going to bust ghosts at Freddy Fazbear's there's actually two of those and one of them is an action movie with a fun time animatronics I was gonna see another screenplay matches plushies take Manhattan and F in terms of goofiness but that one that one comes pretty close okay so when the FNAF and Mario movie came out they had a low score on Rotten Tomatoes and some fans of the movies got mad that's right it's controversy time this hero title isn't a lie because I don't lie unlike Ninja Kiwi now you might be thinking you know didn't I just spend the whole video saying how I wasn't gonna talk about audience and critics isn't that a lie well um I wouldn't say it's a lie I would say it's um, a misdirecting statement. Yep, that's what I'm going with. Um, I should have wrote a script for this part. Um, anyways, I can see why critics didn't like these movies very much, especially FNAF. Imagine seeing trailers about this robot bear movie. Marketing is the scariest thing ever. And then you go see it, and there's a scene of Freddy Fazbear in the gang building a fort with the main characters, and then they all lay down and talk about how it's the best state ever. So, you know, it makes sense we don't like it, but also, um, this movie has Doug. So... So yeah, um, it also makes sense why the Mario movie wasn't received well by critics, because it's super fast paced, and the story is really basic, and the characters get no time to develop. Um, also, it's not funny, and trust me, I know a bit about comedy. I don't know, I feel like people saying critics suck need to chill, just because they didn't like the Italian plumber movie doesn't make their opinions invalid, you know? People can like different things, um, but also, critics just, some of them need to get good at critiquing. Uh, in conclusion, because all, all everything needs to have one of those, the internet bullying paramount into changing the sonic design was funny. Chris Pratt should be in the Minecraft movie, which will never come out. Plus, she's taken Manhattan, would have won an Oscar, because they're just like that. And some people need to stop harassing critics for not liking the movies they did. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am in a bathroom recording this, and I am melting. So, um, bye, I guess.